Hi and welcome to a new video and this time I want to show you how the AR window navigation using the Niantic plugin for MetaQuest 3 works. So first of all I put together a Unity project which we will dive into later but first of all let's have a look at the Quest application and here we are this is the demo application and I modified the device mapping sample and added occlusion and the whole device mapping with placing some cubes. So here you can either create a map or load a map. I already created the map by placing cube and saved it with the position and I added an additional text so you can see the anchor and the relative position of the cube here. And when I look around, the cube is loaded and it's placed within my room based on the map data which was saved before. And there is my navigation line to a predefined target. We'll have a look at this in a minute in the editor and I can follow it. Let me just collapse the UI here. I can follow this navigation line in real time. It is occluded by a static occluder and by the occluded objects within my world, but the navigation line will only react to my static occluders. So as I walk towards the Navigation is calculated. This target, this green cube, which can also be occluded. And if I walk back, the navigation will again show me the way to my target cube, the green one, which we saw before. Here in the editor, I'm using Unity 6.2, by the way. Um, I use the device mapping sample of the Niantic sample kit. And first of all, let's dive into the settings. So I will go Android and let's go to edit project settings to the XR plugin management under Android and MetaQuest. I'm using the OpenXR runtime with the MetaQuest feature group, the MetaXR feature group and the Niantic Lightship support for MetaQuest feature group. And when I click here on Niantic Lightship SDK, you see here the API key and everything is enabled here. I don't need the simulation and so on. And when switching to OpenXR, you can see that there is just a simple Oculus touch controller profile, everything else like the default settings, the MetaQuest, the MetaXR, the Niantic Lightship support, the MetaQuest is here and everything is ticked. And I added the occlusion package here manually. This wasn't done in the sample because it's relying on the AR foundation occlusion and not the MetaQuest occlusion sample here. And it's basically the same as it's in the documentation. We'll have a short dip into that in a minute too. And when looking at the package manager, you see that this is the Meta Core SDK, the Niantic Lightship AR plugin and the Niantic, Niantic Lightship Meta plugin, as well as the XR Interaction Toolkit, the Unity Open XR Meta package, and Niantic also installs the cool AR Core XR plugin and the AR Kit XR plugin. So the default settings are more than enough to just put everything together. And let's have a look how the project actually looks. There is the AR session, which you know when working with AR Foundation is the session variable, the XR rig, XR origin interaction manager, and so on. This is just the default sample from Niantic and the persistent anchor manager here, which uses an anchor game object and the device mapping manager over here. Camera offset, I have disabled everything else, the main camera here, and to the main camera, I added the AR occlusion manager here and the occlusion mesh, which uses the Niantic occlusion mesh and not the system occlusion, which um, gives us better occlusion for everything here. And as we're talking about occlusion, make sure when you wanna use the occlusion that the materials that you use, for instance, the red material here, have the surface type of transparent. Otherwise, the materials will not be occluded. Doesn't matter if it's the unlit or in the blue, the lit part, make sure its surface type is transparent. And there's the right controller. It's the old controller from the sample. I just used it here and the line renderer for the pointing for the ray. Everything else is the same. And there 
XDUI, the default UI for scene loading and so on. I just added the text down here in the scene settings pages um, for displaying the anchor and the offset of the objects that I set here. And here's the device mapping. The on-device persistence is the script I modified a little bit. It's around 90% the original script, but I added here, grab and typical prefab and the text for data debugging. So before diving into that, there is this prefab with the room setup. You can see it here just for better visibility. Here is my starting point where the anchor should be located. This was my wall that we saw before and the floor where the navigation line is projected on and my target cube here. And I parented this under the grab interactable. We can see that here that all the um, geometry has an occlusion shader on it. Let's see it over here on the wall cube. There is this occluder material on it. And this is just the universal render pipeline VR spatial mapping occlusion shader from Unity. And the blocks over here, the room setup has the internet script. We'll look at that in a minute. And the floor cube has a nav mesh on it. You can see the navigation mesh here. And if you want to close this gap, you just have to remove the Collider from the navigation target cube like this. Just disable it and rebake it. Then it's closed, but it's still navigating what's here. And that's actually the whole magic. Um, just have a look at the scripts. So first of all, let's have a look at the Indonav. Just make it a little bit. Here you go. It's just the navigation target and a line renderer here. I have my player here and the nav mesh path, which will calculate. Create a new nav mesh path, set the player if not already existent, and calculate the path from the current player position to the navigation target. All areas, save it into the nav mesh path. And if the status is complete, you can see that the positions here, the corners link, will be set for the line renderer, and it will show and update the navigation in real time. So where is it on the prefab? When we go to the grab interactable and open that on the room setup here, we go there's the navigation target linked, and the line renderer is just a separate game object, which, was, which has the red material unlit on it with a width of 0 0.1. And all the positions removed so that it won't render initially. The next script is the on device persistence. Um, we will not go through the whole script here because it's basically the example script. I just added these two objects, the anchor cube prefab, which we saw before in the debug text, which we saw before too. And there is the create and place cube method, which I rewrote because the previous one just generated um, invisible cubes. I just come here, took the anchor cube prefab, set it to the local position, which is the offset of the ground anchor, no rotation, and tell him that my parent is the anchor and that it should not be moved into world space because this local position should be set to the local position of the game object here. Whenever I either load a map or create a map, this will be called. And I just set something to the debug text to have a easier um, debug possibilities. And if we just check this script here, this is when the map is loaded. So the text file where the position is saved is loaded here. And the same method create and place cube is called up here when the cube is placed, when it's either loaded or placed initially. Um, there's just a few optimizations for the file deletion. Maybe these are already adapted when the new version is updated, the current version is updated, um, but that works 
perfectly fine for me. And it's, I would say, the simplest way of creating an indoor navigation with a more or less fixed starting point without having an image marker and you rely on the device mapping of the anchor. You can also use the cloud mapping. I did not use that. Yeah, well, that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. Of course, the documentation and the GitHub from Niantic, which you can see here, are linked in the description box. And just to walk you through the documentation a little bit, there is the sample project set now this MetaQuest 3 section here, where it's um, guiding you through the initialization and installation process and all the samples. And um, don't be confused, not every sample which is shown here is actually available on the Quest. So you have to go to the package manager here, choose the Lightship Meta plugin and go to the sample section. So there are all samples in there um, from camera image depth device mapping home is just a home meshing object detection semantics and VPS. And here is the GitHub repository. It's actually pretty good. I hope Niantic will update these from time to time and add new features like image tracking or something like that, because this is a really powerful framework which can be used in various ways to create cool and useful experiences on MetaQuest. So that's it for today. Um, I hope you liked the video. Please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, and feel free to become a YouTube channel member. A big shout out to all existing members. Thank you for your support. Or join the Patreon site, which also helps the channel. Or if you want to just buy me a coffee, you can go to the coffee site. And that's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.